Good morning, everybody. This is the Nameless Show. Welcome, one and all. I'm your host, Domitora, on this hopefully fantastic January 11th, 2015, 2015, whoo, 2016. Believe it or not, that's actually the first time I've messed that up this year verbally. I've been writing that thing wrong the whole time, but it's the first time I messed it up verbally. I'm your host, Domitora. We've done a week. We made it last a week. That's a good sign, right? They say it takes two weeks to make a habit. Or is that two weeks to break a habit? I'm really not sure. Either way, we made it a week. I'm ready for week number two. I hope you are as well. Welcome to the show. As never, this show is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, it's the perfect soda that should sponsor this show. Ah, so delicious. So delicious. I'm in love with it. You know what else I'm in love with? New Girl. I had never watched it before uh, before last night. And then last night I started, and now I'm on episode 11 of the first season. I don't know if I should be proud of that, but I am. It's a great show. I, You know what? Go watch it. Go get your Netflix right now. Coupon code non-existent, because I don't have one. But go get your Netflix. Go watch New Girl, and uh, and do that with your day. That's that's you know what my call to action for the day. You know normally I put it at the end of the show and make you listen all the way through. I'm gonna put it at the beginning. You don't even have to listen to the rest of the show now. The call to action is right here, right now, going through your ears. Go watch New Girl. Go binge watch it, and then realize by episode 5 that it's impossible to binge watch if you can't handle awkward situations for more than an hour at a time. And then keep binge watching it because it is so damn good. Go watch New Girl. Go enjoy New Girl. I really hope you do. So what are we talking about today? What are the topics today? David, you're really not going to just, just talk about New Girl for... Do you, however long you end up making this show, because I am kind of hungry. I haven't had dinner yet. I'm actually recording this in a responsible way. It's 9.17 on the 10th, which means I'm recording it actually the day before, like was intended the entire time. But I'm kind of hungry. I'm feeling some Taco Bell today. Taco Bell, another thing that should sponsor the show. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about something that I've actually... I talked about before back when I did uh, back when I did Call of Duty back when I did, back when I uploaded a Call of Duty video once every two weeks if that uh, we're going to talk about the the Washington Redskins football team the Washington racist that's how I like to talk about uh, that, that's how I like to call them and I think after that you kind of can get where I'm going here the name the rants about that organization's name and mascot have been numerous and at this point I think tired because at this point we have to accept and realize Dan Schneider the owner of the team is not going to change it there is no amount of pressure that can be put on him that is going to get him to change that name he is dug in to such a ridiculous degree logic common sense or even just basic human decency is not going to get him to change the name so I don't know how much I'm even going to talk about that I'll link the Ooh, pardon me dr. pepper it's carbonated hmm. and if you slurp it for practical sound effect it um, you know also adds to that carbonation factor a little bit Oh. But how much more can we say about it? Redskin is a racist name. That is a racist term. We don't need to dig into whether or not there have been people, Native Americans, who say, you know what, I, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, it doesn't change whether it's racist or not. Well, we don't need to get into that. What I want to talk about is... The difference that I perceive between a name, a mascot, a team like Washington versus another team that uh, that won this weekend. By the way, I will say all of my picks won. 
I'm uh, I'm 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 pretty proud of that. Seattle, they beat uh, they beat the Vikings. I thought that would be a much better game than it turned out to be. It wasn't. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. I still won the pick. Um, I, I actually I wanted Houston to win. I don't like the other Texas teams. I'm a I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. I don't like Houston, but I love J.J. Watt, and I love Brandon Whedon. And I just, even if he wasn't the starting quarterback, which he really should have been by the second half. Brett Hoyer, what is wrong with you? I get it. You've played for like six different teams. It's, it's, it's got to be getting a little hard to figure out which jersey you're throwing it to. But how do you not get pulled after that performance? Peyton Manning got pulled. Peyton Manning is a much better quarterback even now than Brian Hoyer. And Peyton Manning got pulled after turning it over an ungodly amount of times. But they leave in Brian Hoyer. And don't bother putting in Brandon Whedon. If, you're, if your starting quarterback isn't an all-pro level franchise quarterback, half of the reason you have a backup is to replace your starter when they inevitably fuck up. The other half is the same reason every team has a backup. It's for when the quarterback inevitably gets injured. But the primary half for your, your backup quarterback when you don't have a franchise quarterback is to put them in when the guy who's proven he's slightly better is fucking shit up. And if you don't do that, if you don't utilize your backup in that way, there's just no point. Because Hoyer should have been pulled very early on to be personally responsible now you know what I'll say one of those turnovers wasn't quite his fault sure but that's still five turnovers he was responsible for four of which I'd say it's fair to say were on him how do you not get pulled after that okay anyway it doesn't matter the Chiefs were my pick so I still want it now David why are you cool with the Chiefs, but the Redskins you're not cool with? Why Why is one Native American mascot okay, but the other one isn't? Well, I think it's the same reason we can use the Vikings as a mascot, as a, as a team name, without anyone getting offended. It's the same reason we can use um, the Cowboys, although don't, don't get me started on, you know, I, I know it's different with white. I get that. I get that. But why is it okay for us to use mascots deriving from other cultures, but not okay for us to use the Redskins? And then, why is it okay for us to, to be cool with the Chiefs? but not cool with, with the Redskins. And again, it's not, to me, I don't think it's so much the, the Native American aspect as it is the racist part of it. The Chiefs, the Braves, that's a little bit different to me. Because that's not demeaning another culture with a racist word, and it is racist. It doesn't matter whether some people in that culture don't view it as such, it doesn't change what it is. There's a difference between demeaning another culture with a racist word and choosing a powerful mascot that's derived from another culture. Chiefs, that, that association is not a negative one. Th that's not a negative connotation. The reason that, that you pick something like the Chiefs or the Braves is because of the positive connotation that comes with that. It's because when you hear Chiefs or hear Braves, you think of authority and power and might and yeah, let's go do this. The, we're the Braves. We are awesome. We are, we are warriors. That's what we do. We're the Chiefs. We're in charge. We win football games. It's all about the message that is sent with that nickname. And I think you get a much different message with the Redskins 
the Washington Redskins, the Washington Racists, than you do with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's, it's, it's different in, in spirit. With the Redskins, you're, you're taking a culture and a people and a group and an ethnicity and using a racial slur to make them your mascot. While with the Chiefs, similarly to, once again, we're going to use the example of the Vikings. I know it's it, it, Norwegian Vikings white skin, but still, it's still an ethnicity and, and still a racial group. Sto uh, much further out. I don't know how many Vikings still exist, but I know the 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 group still exists. It's, it's not like the countries the Vikings came from are, are, are barren. The people, the 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 heritage, the lineage still exists. And I think there's your difference. I think there's where there's where the argument can be fairly made that there's nothing wrong with the Chiefs or the Braves while maintaining that there's something wrong with with the Native American or with uh, sorry with the Washington Redskins it's all about the message that is sent intent or not and the message that's sent when you use an ethnicity's heritage as a mascot with a racial word with a racial slur as as the name is demeaning and diminishing and racist but when you use an ethnicity as your mascot with a name and a meaning that conveys the the power and respect that that group commanded that's a significantly different story that's why Something like the Vikings is okay. Now, what what if it were the uh, the the Minnesota pillaging rapists, right? Not okay. I yeah, the the Minnesota pasty people from Eastern Europe. That's not okay. It's it's the same group, right? You still get the Gallahorn. You still get the the the, the fighting. You, you you still get the same image, but you just made it about race because it's, you you can't do that. You've changed the meaning that you're conveying by making it into a a racial slur and takedown instead of something that could almost be considered uplifting. Now granted, I I have a weird perspective on this. Weird in that I'm, I'm I mean I'm white. I'm a white man. I got a white dick. And I have all the privileges that that naturally affords me. I'm not going to deny that. Anyone who denies it is uh, is ignorant, I think at this point intentionally, of facts. But I'm white, so I can't accurately 100% say, hey, Chief's okay, Redskin's not. But I can, based on the perception I think it's, is, is fair to have, make that claim. Because one is a racial slur used to demean a group of people and turn them into a mascot. And the other is conveying power and authority. And again, it's still taking a group of people and turning them into a mascot. Similar to many other teams, basically any team in any sport at any level that uses real people as a mascot and I'm not saying maybe that is the solution actually maybe the solution is just to get rid of of all people mascots right no of course not but if we can have the Trojans right that I'm I, I have a lot of Italian heritage that's not 
Ugh. Trojan is not really Roman. I guess, although, don't they play in the Colosseum? Hmm. We'll think about that. We'll think about... Alright, we'll just pretend that the Trojans is Roman, and if I'm wrong, we can, we can correct me later. Or the Gladiators, right? Say we got a team called the Gladiators. There we go. I know for sure that that fits this little criteria that I can actually relate to, right? I have a lot of Italian heritage. A lot of Italian in my blood. I don't think, uh, I, I'm, I'm not bothered by gladiators. And, and I don't think any other Italian would be. Because it's, 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 hey, gladiators, warriors, tough people. That would be different if, and I don't actually know any racial slurs for Italians, so you'll have to forgive me there. But it'd be significantly different if it were a racial slur for, for Italians. And that's where we need to draw the line. The line shouldn't be whether or not you're basing your team name off of an ethnicity or a group. Because then we, we have to dump the Cowboys. We have to dump the Vikings. We have to dump the Patriots. And then we have to dump the Chiefs. It shouldn't be whether you're basing it off of a people. It should be whether you're basing it off of a people in respect saying, hey, we're the Chiefs because Chiefs are badasses. We think it's an honor to be called the Chiefs because these guys were some badass motherfuckers who led their nations and just, they're awesome. Versus we're the Redskins because Native Americans and fight and, uh, and Redskin, which is, which is racist. And I had somebody say to me, well, David, how bad can Redskin really be? Right? You can say it. No one's punching you. If you said the, the N-word, which, you know, I, I, I'm using this for effect, don't hate. If you said nigger, you would get so much shit. You would get so much shit that you literally are nervous about posting this podcast now because you just said that word. And yet you can say redskin. So clearly, red skin isn't as bad, right? Kind of. Red skin as a, as a word isn't as bad, not because it doesn't mean that, that kind of same level of dehumanizing racist shit. It's not as bad because people just don't care. It's not as bad because people don't give a shit about it. Because there are way more people out there who are ready to recognize that nigger is a racist term that cannot be used. And that's part of the reason it's used so often by racist assholes, because even they realize that it is a racist term and a demeaning term and a derogatory term, and that's why they use it. But Redskin isn't viewed in that way. Because people just don't care as much. Part of that reason might be because Native Americans, for one, don't really get the same level of hate in general as other ethnic minorities. Which uh, is good on one hand because, you know, don't hate on people. But it's bad on the other hand because there's a lot of, there's a lot of hate. There really is. But the, the other reason is, I mean... It was genocide. And I guess, technically, hey, wh white people, we kind of won, right? Kinda. We won the, we won the, the Native American, we won the Indian Wars. We, we got our genocide. We won, we did it. So does that, is, is that where it's okay? Because... The, the Native Americans are a group that we as the United States actually went to war against and defeated. Is that what makes it cool? Well, for whatever reason, there is this pointed refusal among a large group of people to acknowledge that redskin is a racist term. And that's something that I simply don't understand. It's, it's widely acknowledged nigger is a racist term. I think, 
I, I don't know anybody who disagrees with me there. Because even racist, the reason they use it, once again, is because it's a racist term and conveys their point. But redskin is so often argued to not be a racist term, and not just by fans of the Washington football team, but by people in general. I've talked to people who I respect. People whose opinions I go to for things. People who don't like the Washington football team because they don't like the Washington football team, regardless of who their mascot is. Who are surprised that I think that Redskins are racist term. Of course I think it's a racist term. It's a racist term. If, if I were to walk around the street calling everyone every everyone I saw, what, or even better, right? Say there's a high school in Texas who picks wetback as their as their mascot. That that that's their that's their mascot name, wetback. And it's I don't know, logos, you know, let, let's go with something cliched and racist. Logos a uh, the outline of a guy with a mustache and a sombrero. Right? Not the outlaws or you know, not not even the Mexicans. They're they're the they're the they're the Texas high school wetbacks. Nobody's arguing that that's not racist, right? Because even the racists get that it's racist. That's why they use it. So maybe that's where it comes from. Maybe there's just there's not enough, and I I I hope you understand what I mean when I'm saying this. Because I feel like this is going to be a hard point to clarify if you don't immediately get it. Maybe there's not enough active racism against Native Americans in this country anymore for people to acknowledge and understand passive racism. Maybe there's not enough people going around and actively being racist dickbags towards Native Americans for people to realize that it's even still possible to be racist towards Native Americans. I mean, we as a country wiped out not a culture, for the record, not a culture. Because these were nations, these were different peoples. Th think of Europe. They're all Europeans, right? But there's Belgium, there's France, there's Russia, there's Spain. United Kingdom, on and on and on, Austria, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, there's so many, are the Netherlands and Dutch the same? I'm not very well educated on my Europe stuff, I apologize. Well, the point is, they're all Europeans, but they're different countries. Native Americans, very similar thing. They're all Native American. But it didn't change the fact that they were different nations, so we didn't just wipe out a culture. We wiped out nations and cultures from the same place. We basically Hitlered North America. We took it over. We took land from different countries, tribes, different groups of people, different cultures, made it our own and made them be our own. We didn't do death camps. We did chemical warfare, and that kind of took care of it for us. But is, is that what the problem is? Is that why people try to defend the name? Is it because we just, we don't understand? Because there's not enough left? Because there's not enough emphasis put on it anymore? Because it's not an active thing in our society like we see with other ethnic minorities. Do people just not get that racism against Native Americans is still possible? It's like, uh, oh, you know what? Here's an example. Team Four Stars, Dragon Ball Z abridged. Watch it. You really should. Even if you don't like Dragon Ball Z, it's hilarious. Especially, you know, my age group, like... 28 and younger, 
guys we or girls I don't know where we grew up with that Dragon Ball Z oh man you gotta watch it but there's one point where Frieza talks about the uh, stupid money grubbing stupid money grubbing chlorophores tried to chlor Frieza right out of his money blew those little bastards to hell is what he did and somebody goes that's racist and Frieza goes, well, you can't exactly be a racist against a race that doesn't exist. Is that our mindset here? Is that the idea behind people defending Redskin? Not even as a logo. We're not even talking about the logo anymore. We're talking about just the word. Is that the mindset, subconscious or not, of people defending that? Well, they're not around anymore, so you can't really be racist to them. Because they are. Little fun fact for your day. There are still Native Americans in the world. Who knew? But is that the mindset? We can't be racist against a race that no longer exists, so we can appropriate it. And, uh, you know, and just kind of use a derogatory slur for them as a mascot. No repercussions. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's this mindset. They're not around anymore, so we can't be racist against them. Is that, that... That might actually be accurate. But Chiefs, Braves, I don't see the problem. And I'll welcome somebody to try and educate me on it. Because if I'm wrong, I want to admit I'm wrong. Because I want to be right. I think we all want to be right. And you know how you get to be right? By somebody correcting you when you're wrong. So I hope somebody, if I'm wrong there, if Braves and Chiefs is just as bad as a derogatory slur, correct me, and uh, and I'll, I'll shift my opinion according to the facts, the, the, the facts laid out. But I feel like it's very, it's a very clear line between what is racist Redskins, derogatory slur. And what, if not necessarily is a, a a compliment of a culture and a people, which I'd almost argue it is, like the Chiefs or the Braves, is at the very least not racist against those people. So, so there we go. There's my rant on the Washington Redskins. Ooh, there's my rant on the Washington Redskins, but more importantly... Even though I think I talked about it less than the Washington football team, the Washington racist, is the Chiefs and the Braves. And is that really so bad? I don't think so. And correct me if I'm wrong. Keep it polite. Keep it nice. It doesn't matter how correct your point is. If you're a dick about it, nobody's going to listen to you. That's why I don't make much impact. So keep it nice, keep it polite. But if I'm wrong here, correct me and say, hey, Doman Tor is fucking wrong. Here's why. And then and then we'll adjust accordingly and we'll post another video and say, hey, yeah. Chiefs is also bad. But you know what I won't post? Because there's no one who's gonna correct me on this. A video saying, hey, Redskins is not bad. Because it is. It's a racist term. And you can say bandwagon all you want. I didn't know about it until it became a popular thing. And I think that might even be something else that's distracting from, from the point and the cause. Is this bandwagon mentality that I've gotten before of, you know, where, why weren't you saying this back, you know, in middle school? Why weren't you saying this back in high school? Why is Redskin just now bad? Well, the answer is it's not just now bad. It's always been bad. Many people are just getting to the point where they realize and have been educated in the fact that it's bad. People have to know that it's bad to know that it's bad. If somebody is never taught or told that Redskin is racist, that, that Redskin is a racist slur, 
they can't very well come out and say it's a it's a racist slur if they, if they don't realize it on their own and they haven't been educated on it well of course they're not gonna you know rail against it there's nothing wrong with bandwagoning onto this you know, redskin is a racist term phenomena because you're right and if you didn't previously know it then you didn't previously know it but you know it now right people are are all of a sudden people are out of this world loving 21 pilots i love the 21 pilots i love that band i saw him at the house of blues in dallas for my 21st birthday and I'm going to see him again this summer on a tour that as of right now has sold out both their closing dates at Madison Square Garden. It's amazing. But the show I went to in the House of Blues in Dallas didn't even sell out. I've been, I've been following this band for, for a little while now. And there are people on my Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr who love 21 Pilots. Right? And I can say, and sometimes I do think, you know what, I liked them before... You're just you're just bandwagoning on. They just they, you know they started playing on top twenty five. But you know what? Who cares? Joe John Jordan on my Twitter, who posted a link to a Twenty One Pilots song, two and a half three years after I mentioned Twenty One Pilots. He still likes Twenty One Pilots. He's still right. They're still a great band. He's just discovering them. Because they're playing on Top 25 Radio, a station he listens to. Bandwagon is sometimes okay. Because sometimes the bandwagon is how we get educated in the first place. I got on to 21 Pilots because I worked at a place that played one of their songs on a long music rotation, and it stood out to me. And it stood out to a friend of mine who worked there, and then we, we started listening to them more, and then we got the albums, and then we went to the show, and then they they'd blown up. I had to discover it too. Everyone has to discover everything. The timing in which it's discovered shouldn't matter. As long as a belief is strongly held, it shouldn't matter when that belief was formed. If somebody is crusading in the accurate movement that Redskins is a racist term and should not be used as a mascot, it doesn't matter when they joined. What matters is that they joined and they came to this enlightened state of racism is not okay, should not be tolerated, and definitely shouldn't be advocated by a football team in the NFL, a multi-billion dollar industry that is located in our nation's capital, the nation that committed genocide against Native Americans. Jump on the bandwagon. You don't dismiss somebody's opinion or, or what somebody stands for simply because they haven't been standing for it for for their entire lives it doesn't take away from what they're saying if what they're saying is accurate and what the, and, and if somebody is saying the washington redskins is a racist term then it's accurate it is it is accurate and should not be minimalized simply because somebody jumped on that this is racist bandwagon four months ago, a year ago, two years ago. That doesn't change anything about the accuracy of the movement. And I'm actually having a hard time following that up. I'm having a hard time following up that rant because it wasn't even my intent to spend this long, this 30 odd minutes ranting about this subject because like I said at the very beginning, I'm amazed that anyone still is, me included. Because at this point, it's abundantly clear that without government action, or action by the other owners of the NFL, or, I, well, okay, there's a lot of things that could change it, I'll grant you. But if it hasn't happened yet, it's not going to. Advertisers aren't going to pull out. Because they haven't. The government's not going to take action yet, because it hasn't. Other team owners aren't going to demand a name change because they still haven't. 
This is not going to change as long as Dan Snyder owns the team. And if I'm wrong, great. I hope I'm wrong. But I feel... May I call it a premonition. That I'm not. So what's the point of talking about it anymore? Because I think at this point, everyone's heard the arguments. And everyone is aware that this is a racist term. Whether or not they acknowledge it, that's a different story. That speaks more of their own ignorance than it does of anything else. Sorry, Dr. Pepper break. But I don't... Barring some sort of big news, this is probably going to be the last time I talk about Washington Redskins in terms of racism. I may talk about football again and they may come up. They'll be the Washington racists or the Washington football team. Not the Redskins. But barring some big news out of this front, I probably won't be bothering to talk about it anymore. Because despite the, the size of the movement and the power of the movement, to the point where even South Park has joined in, that was last year. And what changed? Nothing. I'm not giving up hope. I still stand by the same thing and I'll still argue it, but I'm not going to bother it on my channel. Because I don't see it changing. Because it's that same mentality. You can't be a racist against a race that no longer exists. And to way too many people in this country and across the world, Native Americans are something out of our history. Not something that exists right now. Reservations were something that happened in the 1800s. They don't still exist. Native Americans now are only thought of in gambling and as our sports mascots. And for, for whatever reason, I think we've embraced that Frieza-esque, that space Nepal Hitler mindset that, you know what, we can't be a racist against a race that doesn't exist. And even though they still exist, yeah, they pretty much don't exist. And it's sad, it's a shame, and I hope it changes. And if there is new news on it, you can come here. I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be talking about it. But in the meantime, there's people with much more powerful voices than me who haven't been able to get anything done. And I don't see anything happening. Because small town football teams might bend to pressure, as they should. And politicians may put on the pressure that small town team bending amounts of people can't really put on, as they should. But in the end, I don't see anything happening. Not anytime soon anyway. Not soon enough to make this a regular occurrence on my channel, I know that much. Wow, we got kind of depressing there at the end. We really did. I will link my original video on this topic down in the description below. That original video was from Call of Duty Black Ops 2 days. That original video, the first time that I went crazy on this topic on the internet, with pretty much the same point. Barring the space Nepal Hitler racist against a race and or sense of inevitability as to a lack of change. Three years ago. A little less than three years ago, actually. But three years ago. It's crazy to think. Now we're playing Black Ops 3. We're playing Black Ops 3 three years after we were playing Black Ops 2. We're talking about the same topic. We're in a rut, and that's the problem. We're in a rut. Nothing changed. But at least now, at least having talked about it for 39 minutes and 27 seconds, however, however long it is, factoring out the intro roll. Having talked about it for this long, at least I've come to the realization of why people don't care and why people don't view it as racist. Because they feel like they can't be racist against the race. It doesn't exist. 
Which is a mindset in itself that completely disregards the fact that yeah, but, there were uh, lots and lots of tribes and Native American nations, and it's not all just the same. It's not all just the same person. Oh, I don't even know if I can add any topics to this one. I wanted to cover a few things today, but um, I'm burned out now. I'm burned out. I feel bad after this topic. I feel just... I don't want to talk anymore. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. Because it's sad that this topic needs to be talked about. And I feel like... I'm, I'm going to get hit... This, this is the kind of video that if watched enough by by enough different people is going to get hate from every every side of the fence on it. I'm still going to upload it. It's still going to go on. I, I thank you for listening if you've listened so far. But you know what? The Washington football team collapsed. And it was fun to watch. And I, I, I definitely stand by that tweet that I sent out. If you don't Follow me on Twitter, links down in the description below. It's Nomentor. It's the same as every other social media you can possibly imagine. I probably have it under that name. And it was a great game by the Washington Racists. 10 out of 10, do it again. As I hope they do. It's like the Patriots with Bill Belichick. I want them to lose every game as long as he's the coach because he cheats. And don't give me the shit about everyone was doing Spygate. I don't care. He got caught. He cheated. And don't give me the shit about Deflategate and how it was proved wrong. Look, there are... We will have a whole video on that. But good lord, if you look at the fumble rates of running backs who played for the Patriots and played for other teams or went from a different team to the Patriots to other teams, fumble rate was league average with the Patriots well below. When moved to another team, league average again. It's like this magical thing where when you play for the Patriots, you don't fumble. I wonder if that's because of deflated football. Even if it's deflated just a little bit, it's much easier to grip and hold on to. Could that be it? Hmm. I bet that's it. The little cheating fuckers. I hate the Patriots. So obviously a different reason. <laughs> but I won't root for the Patriots as long as, as Bill Belichick is, um, is the coach. I hope the best for the players. I think... I have a whole nother rant about Tom Brady too, but I think he's a good quarterback. Maybe even the greatest. The argument can be made fairly evenly either way. And I wish him success. You know, if he wants to go a season breaking every single passing record while still somehow losing every game, I'm cool with that. And the Washington team, Kirk Cousins? The kids, he, he's good. They've got a they've got a pretty good team. I'm not looking forward to my Cowboys having to play them. I wish all those players individually success. I wish the the, the coaches individually success. As long as Dan Snyder owns the team, or at the very least, as long as their name is what it is, I hope they lose every game. And on that end, my Cowboys with Greg Hardy. I almost don't want us to do anything anymore. I called it at the very beginning of the season when he was signed. I was at work. I was talking to my boss. I got the notification that we signed him. Same time he did. He looked at me. I looked at him. We were in the back room together. And I just go, that's it. That's the season. The season's done right here. He goes, why? I said, because we just signed Greg Hardy. And karma exists. And the universe acts and there's God and whatever else you want to believe in. Whatever it is, we are not going to be a, a winning, a good, a contending football team while we have this scumbag on our team. It's just not going to happen. And what happens? Romo goes down with injury. Des goes down with injury. Nobody can, can they can't win without him. Now with a fourth pick in the draft. After the previous year, should have been playing in the NFC Championship game. Because it was a goddamn catch. So for my Cowboys, you know, I want us to win a Super Bowl. Been a fan my entire life. I think, I, I think Romo deserves that. Jason Witten, above anyone else, deserves that. 
But at the same time, you know, not while Hardy's on the team. Not while Hardy's on the team. Well, I should just do an entire. I should just dedicate an entire day, one of these days, to just a, a two and a half hour long show about sports. But I think forty five minutes of ranting and just I don't feel good now. So we're gonna call it shut. We're gonna call it good. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Um, I, I I hope you know you if you didn't before, you realize now that 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 is a racist term, and and I hope something does happen with it. And I hope Greg Hardy doesn't get signed in the off season. And um, and I hope. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me bring up the bracket because for some ridiculous reason, who teams play changes based on whether they on uh, on who wins, which makes no sense to me. It should just be bracketed and go. Um. So let me give you my picks real quick. Let me give you my picks for. Uh, for this weekend. So hold on. Hold on. We're loading it up. I'm thinking this ahead of time. I'll admit. Come on, just give me a bracket. Give me a bracket. There we go. All right, we've got Chiefs of the Patriots. Um Oh, there's the Chiefs again. <laughs> we got to give it I got to give it to Alex Smith and the Chiefs. Um no, I think I think uh, the Patriots just have too many injuries. I don't I don't see them I don't see them beating the Chiefs the way they're playing. Their defense is fantastic, and Alex Smith he's not a flashy quarterback. He's not an All Star quarterback, but he has a great handle of the game. He is exactly what everybody has been saying he is. He's a great game manager, and with a defense like that, that's really all they need. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Chiefs Patriots. I'll give you scores and lines maybe on Friday. Steelers Broncos. I'm gonna give it to the Steelers. I don't like Big Ben. I don't. But uh, I don't. Manning Manning starting, and I don't think it looks good. And then the NFC, we've got the Green Bay Packers, Arizona Cardinals. Got to give it to the Cardinals. Got to give it to the Cardinals. They've been playing incredibly well. And then Seahawks and Panthers. I guess you got to give it to the Panthers. And then that'll give us what? Chiefs. If it goes my way, Chiefs, Steelers in the AFC. Cardinals, Carolina in the NFC. Say Cardinals go to the playoffs and Chiefs go to the playoffs. That's not going to be a popular pick. And it's probably not going to come true. Tune in Friday. If I remember to, I'll even give you a, I'll even give you a point spread. That's the show, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Nameless Show. I'm sorry it was such a depressing and bummerific show, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Don't forget to like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Share the absolute shit out of it. It is the best thing you possibly do for the show. And once again, the comments. I love the idea of interacting with people, but we need more comments to get that going. Let's get this going. Let's fuel it. Fuel it. Join the, join the bandwagon fucking jump right on the bandwagon everybody thank you for watching have a great day enjoy your monday january 11 2016 said it right this time peace